Boingy, boingy, boing. Wee! Hey guys, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about responsibility. While we take a look at this story, within another story. Think we should stop monkeying around? Nah, we're having a honking good time. We really need to start the show now. On it. Sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry, Emily. I was riding my bike and there were like six potholes and... What on earth? G'day, mate! Wait, cinnamon toast! Don't scare me like that! What is all of this? Well, as you know, this week we're talking about responsibility, which is showing you can be trusted with what's expected of you. I see. And since you were running late, I decided to do the responsible thing by setting up for the show. Very sweet. But why the balloon animals? Walk with me. You see, I have recently taken up the fine art of balloon animalry. And since I'm clearly awesome at it, I felt like it was my responsibility to share it with the world. Wait, you made all these? Technically, the guy who's teaching me made most of them, but I did make a few, such as... <gasps> the boa constrictor. The cobra. And my very first creation, the Alaskan bulwark. True work of art. Thanks. Now, what is your favorite animal? <gasps> Sumatran rhino. Or a dog. One dog coming up. And voila, one balloon dog just for you. This is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your crazy new hobby with us. Yeah, no problem. You know, now that I have a balloon dog, I should probably feed her. How do you feed a balloon dog? Glad you asked. Let's make it. Today on how to feed your balloon animal. We're doing a little experiment called jumping goo. How can you make goo jump? So glad you asked. For this experiment, you'll need one fourth cup of cornstarch, one fourth cup of vegetable oil, a bowl for mixing, a measuring cup, a spoon, and one balloon animal. A regular balloon would work too. First, mix the oil and cornstarch together in a bowl. Sebastian? On it. That's some down home cooking right here. Next, take your balloon animal and rub it on your head. Wow, you're here. Still better than when I hit that bush after the potholes. Mm. Now, take a spoonful of your mixture and very slowly move it close to the balloon without touching it. And voila! All thanks to a little thing called static electricity. Isn't that where you rub your feet on a carpet really fast and shock people? Yes, but there's more to it. When you rub a balloon on your hair, negatively charged electrons from your hair rub onto the balloon. This gives the balloon a negative charge. But what about the jumping goo? Well, the cornstarch in the goo we made has a positive charge. Negative charges attract positive charges so, the positively charged goo jumps onto the negatively charged balloon. And that's how you feed your adorable balloon puppy. Wow, thanks so much for sharing that experiment. Hey, thanks for sharing your balloon animals. And speaking of sharing, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Luke, one of the four gospels that tells the story of Jesus. During his time on earth, Jesus traveled from town to town, teaching people about God. Often, he told parables to show people what God is like. Parables are short stories about everyday objects and familiar situations, like breaking bread, planting seeds, or hunting for a lost coin. Jesus was a master storyteller. His stories were easy to remember. They made people think for themselves and make connections. And that's where our story begins. Take it away. 
guys, I'm Padma. I hope you're ready because today's story is a storied story within another story. Don't worry, I'll help you keep track. One day, Jesus was speaking to a crowd of people, teaching them about God. Suddenly, a man called out from the crowd. Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family property with me. Friend, who made me a judge or umpire between you? Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Now here's where Jesus did something brilliant. Instead of giving a quick answer, Jesus used a powerful word picture. It went something like this. Once there was a rich man whose land produced a very large crop. Sir, we're set to bring in a bumper crop this year. Wow. Look at all this food. I'm going to make a fortune off this. Harvest the crop at once. Uh, we're working on that, but there's a problem. A problem? You don't have enough barn space to store all your grain. I was thinking, well, you could share. Share? But it's all mine. Well, yes, uh, yes, it is. <gasps> I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I can store all the grain for myself. Oh. Yay me! <laughs> now I have plenty of grain stored away for years to come. I can take it easy, relax, eat, drink, and party all night long. <laughs> but as the rich man was thinking these thoughts, God spoke to him. You foolish man. Tonight I will take your life away from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? No! This story, that's how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves, but is not rich in the sight of God. Oh. Hmm. It's okay to have nice things. But our stuff should never get in the way of loving God and loving people. Everything we have comes from God. And one of the best ways we can show God's love is by sharing what we've been given. The end. Two stories for the price of one. Good deal. Sometimes the best deal is to give instead of holding on to things yourself. So, what's our part in the story? Whether you have a little or a lot, it all belongs to God. We have the amazing job of using what we've been given to show God's love to others. Like sharing your cookies from lunch. Ooh, or letting someone use your hoodie when they're cold. It might even be saving part of your allowance or birthday money to buy food for people who need it. Yeah, there's this little food pantry box right by my library. Anyone who can give food puts it in the box and then anyone who needs it can get it. That's awesome. And we can share a lot more than just our stuff. Things like our time. You can share your time by choosing to read to your little brother instead of playing your own game. If you got a big backyard, you can share it with your friends and all play some soccer. You can even share your story. That seems a little big. Well, when you tell your friends about the good things and the hard things in your life and how God has helped you, it can encourage them too. Who knew we had so much to share? I love it. Thanks for sharing your time with me. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. Share what you have. Your stuff, your time, even your story. Speaking of, wanna share with me how to make an Alaskan bulwark? It would be my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you See next, next time. time. So I can do it like that. Gonna pull back. I don't. I don't know if I. I don't think I get it.